I often think about writing as the invisible profession in that we close a door and we reemerge years later with this offering, with this kind of letter to the world. And so in that interim period, which is, as I said, invisible and, and entirely hidden, completely mysterious and usually maybe, maybe um, superstitiously unspoken, um, there is a stigma in that people really do wonder what you might be doing. I think some people have an old-fashioned idea of the writers not being very organized or being a little flaky, a little wild, but in my experience that can, that can be further from the truth. I feel like most writers I know are very stable, very disciplined people who are working really hard every day to, to do their craft. There's maybe a, a stigma in spending years uh, writing and not succeeding in the same way that there's a, you know, working at anything for years and years and not succeeding at it. I'm intimately familiar with that process myself. Um, there might be a bit of a stigma against, I mean, people might think, well, when are you gonna get a real job? When are you gonna realize that you actually don't have any talent? You have no future in this line of work. There's always the question, you know, when you say to someone, well, I'm a writer. And if it is the wrong party, well, then they're gonna say, well, which Starbucks is it that you work at? Um, so, so yeah, there's definitely this, this idea um, that you can't that you can't make a living as a as a, as a writer, and uh, you know that's almost true. I used to feel that if I said I was an artist or a writer, that I was uh, that I might have to apologize and um, explain that there was also a, another job at the side of that, a real job. But um, I don't think that's so very much anymore. That, that there is the stigma or that I feel that I must apologize. And I think that comes with, um, with having the work uh, accepted and you know, reviewed, talked about, people sort of recognizing you in certain moments. In a sense, the writer gets a break. Um, if you're a lawyer and you're not making any money, you're a failure. If you're a doctor and you're not making any money, you know, everyone says, what's, what's wrong? But if you're a writer and not making any money, you get forgiven a lot because writers aren't supposed to make any money. And you still end up with a kind of a, uh, enough social cachet to get invited to nice parties and to act like you know what you're talking about when in fact you're making less money than the kid who's bussing the table. Uh, to, that, to that extent, being a writer is kind of a gift uh, socially. There is, I suppose, a certain kind of cachet or celebrity to writing, as, as frankly, I think there, there should be. Uh, you know, I mean, you can't have um, The Simpsons, you can't have schlocky Hollywood blockbusters, and you can't have great literature without people to actually dream the stuff up and write it down first. And I think those people Mind you, they're making millions of, never mind that. Anyway, I think those people, you know, deserve celebration. Even in my own relatively mundane branch of the business, sure, there is a certain amount of celebrity and it's, it's very pleasing. I've had readers come up to me, you know, I've had actual strangers, you know, who didn't know me beforehand, read my books and send me an email or come up to me when I've been making a reading or something and, and tell me they loved the book and, and they really enjoyed reading it and they laughed and, and all those things are wonderful. It's, it's great to know that I could give someone that kind of enjoyable reading experience. I think one of the things that, that gives would give any thinking person pause about setting pen to paper or a finger to, to um, keyboard is, especially when you're doing imaginative work, poetry, fiction or whatever, is um, in the kind of world in which we live, how do I justify this? What drives me as an artist is that in the end, in the end, you never know what will be useful to someone else tomorrow. You never know what the future is going to need, which is why so I encourage so many people to write. I don't think that the answer to all our problems is going to be one book. Yeah, but I do think the answers to all our problems are going to be found in the creative. Because the creative, when we create, we're basically sending a little map and sending it forward into the future.
I think primarily often people read because we're fascinated by one another. We're monkeys on one level, right? So <laughs> you see monkeys together and they're just looking at the other monkey. What that, what's that monkey doing now? <laughs> I'm like that monkey and I'm also different from that monkey. And so we work on that level. We're just completely fascinated by one another. And in a novel, you can read about all kinds of people and you can find out everything about them. You can open up their mail. You can see what they do when they're alone, et cetera, et cetera. And so much of our lives, are, you know, our public lives are not our private lives. <laughs> and so the novel, we enter into the private lives of others in other places, in other times, and et cetera. It just widens that experience. And that, so that fascination is there. We also read novels um, because, for for the reason why we're drawn to all art, because of that it feeds it. You know, if if prose is beautiful, it feeds us on a very important level, right? That's it's crucial. And there, are, especially today, people feel a little uh, uneasy about the way things are going. Uh, things seem to me may, may, maybe they're uh, crumbling a little bit, and for a writer to come up and say, well, here's a contemporary novel dealing with these very issues that you're, that you're, uh, that you're having, uh, that, that wake you up at three in the morning. I think people appreciate that. They want to they read about those things, uh, not necessarily find the answers to them, but just um, have some kind of uh, an association with, uh, with a novel, a private book, that where these very uh, issues are at stake and characters are grappling with them. We're creating characters sometimes even the most evil of characters that the reader has to empathize with. And that empathy, when you can empathize, crawl into the skin of, of another being, even a fictional being, um, and even if it's just a subtle change from your own position, uh, uh, even if you're a woman who is reading from the point of view of a man, those kinds of, of forays into other worlds, I think are political acts. They teach us to empathize. And I think that's what writers do for society. I guess some people are born writers. I wasn't. I was born a reader. Um, and I read everything all the time. It's most of what I did with my life until I was about 12 years old. And as far as I can remember. I mean, occasionally I played dress up, but mostly I would dress up and go read.